Back in the day, a doctor told Temple Grandin's mother that she had little choice but to institutionalize her severely autistic daughter. Her mother ignored the experts and helped Temple find her way to becoming a successful difference maker. In part three of our four-part Animal Passion interview, Temple talks about her path to understanding the vital role of visual thinkers and the beauty of bringing together different types of minds. What is thinking in pictures? It's literally movies in your head. My mind works like Google for images. Because I could actually test run a piece of equipment in my mind, just like a virtual reality computer system. So Temple, you amaze me. You're such a visionary for animal behavior, and there's not a parent out there with an autistic child that doesn't know and worship you. How does it feel to be such a global leader? I feel it's a responsibility. Out of all these achievements, which are so many, which ones are you most proud of? Well, I have, you know, things I'm proud of for, you know, different reasons and different points of my life. Uh, some of the books I've written, I'm really proud of. With all these accomplishments that you have done, do you have a, a goal? Do you have anything you want to do? Well, right now, I'm very concerned about the um, visual thinkers getting screened out of the educational system. I'm one of these people that can't do algebra. I've had a pretty good career without algebra. Yeah, me too. And <laughs> I, I am too. seeing too many kids now can't pass algebra, and then they won't let them do anything else, yeah. like be kept out of auto shop or kept out of theater or kept up out of some other class. And we need our visual thinkers. Now, the thing is, the visual thinker is just one kind of mind. You see, the autistic mind tends to be a specialist mind, good at one thing, bad at something else. And where I was bad was algebra. And I was never allowed to take geometry or trig. Gigantic mistake. I'm finding a lot of kids that need to skip algebra, go right to geometry and trig. I get asked all the time, oh, how would you do to help education? One of the things I would do is put all the hands-on classes back in. Cooking, sewing, woodworking, theater, music. Then in high school, you know, auto shop, mechanics. Uh, these are all things that you know, lead to good careers where we have shortages. There are a lot of kind of Asperger types and, and autism types that are not ending up in Silicon Valley where they belong. And we need our visual thinkers. And so getting people to be aware of how the different kinds of minds can work together. Like I found on big construction projects, they're putting up great big plants, complicated big things. And it was very interesting to see how the engineering was divided up. The visual thinkers like me would do all the clever equipment. Think packaging machines. Okay, think when you look inside your printer, all the paper feed mechanism. That's clever engineering. That's done by visual thinkers. Then the mathematical minds, they do the boilers and refrigeration. Okay. They'd make sure the roof didn't collapse. You see the more mathematical parts of engineering. But there's also a visual thinking part of engineering. How do you actually do things? Because, for example, I see a solution to a problem, like when I designed that entrance in the dip vat. You can actually build my dip fat system off of the movies, the, everything that was shown in the movie, you could actually build it off of it. It's completely accurate. But I came up with that ramp design that prevented the drowning problem. You know, that was seeing a solution to a problem. And you also need to prevent disasters and things like that. You know, things like Fukushima, where uh, they'd had watertight doors, Fukushima wouldn't have burned up. They had had watertight doors to protect the electrically driven emergency cooling pump. Uh, engineers calculate risk. Visual thinkers see risk. I see the water flooding the site. What do you think is going to happen to the basement? And when I was younger, I used to think it was because they were stupid. Well, I didn't know about the different kinds of thinking then. What I've learned now is that they don't see it. The ability to put information into categories. I find a lot of people are not very good at this. Like when I'm out troubleshooting with equipment or problems with something in a plant, they don't seem to be able to figure out, do I have a training people issue? Or do I have something wrong with the equipment? In other words, categorize equipment problem from a people problem. I find a lot of people have difficulty doing that. Now, let's say I figure out, is it an equipment problem? Is it a minor problem with something simple I can fix? Or is the whole design of the system wrong? People have a hard time figuring that out. I'm very concerned about losing really important skills in what I call the clever engineering department. Okay. And I um, had a student in my class who had never used a ruler to measure ah. anything. Um, kids are growing up, they've never used a tool for anything. So that's something I'm really working on right now is um, there's scientific research that shows that there's different kinds of minds exist. There's a lot of research now. Lots of people are mixtures, but then you get somebody who ends up getting a label. They might be an extreme mathematician. They might be an extreme visual thinker. And 
They're going to be good at one thing, terrible at something else. We need to be developing skills. I'm seeing too many smart kids shunted into special ed, and they're just getting addicted to video games, right. not getting jobs. This is the stuff that I'm really working on right now. I talk about jobs for, you know, kids with autism. Jobs with a lot of multitasking are not good. Mm-hmm. Jobs that use long-term memory, those are often really good jobs. And what, what's an example of one of those jobs? Well, a multitasking job, busy window at a takeout window at a restaurant, a chaotic store during the Christmas rush. Those would be examples of bad jobs. Good jobs uh, where there's been some real successes have been an office supply store, you know, where you get recognized for maybe the knowledge of, about printers. An auto parts store really loved an autistic guy because he memorized every part number in the store. Oh, I love it. And those are also relatively quiet retail establishments. And that tends to work better. And I'm seeing too many kids where their whole identity is autism. And they say, oh, I want to be an autism activist. And I explained to them, you will be a better activist if you can go out and excel in a job, maybe an engineering job, an art job, writing job, or something like that. And then you do the activist stuff. I always emphasize all the things I've done at work. And what I learned is I learned to sell my work. People thought I was weird. But when I showed them my drawings and my pictures, they looked at that and go, oh, you designed that? People on the spectrum usually are good at one thing, bad at something else. We need to be putting a lot more emphasis on building up the area of strength. Check out part four of our interview where Temple shares what she's learned from her lifelong work with animals. And for more information about Temple, go to templegrandin.com. For more information, go to aliquad.org backslash podcast. And be sure to check out the video versions on Lori Hood's Difference Makers YouTube channel.